it down to the neon lights. It's where I want to be because I'm just trying to make it. You're listening to the Diamonds in the Rough podcast. I'm just trying to make it. Powered by Prospects Live. Yo, yo, yo. This is Diamonds in the Rough. We're back. It is Wednesday. Oh, this date's going to be tough because we're Saturday right now. What would that date be? Fifth, seven. sixth, seven, eighth. Eighth. June eighth. June eighth. Uh great, great date. Um, we're all in kind of well, Trick's in, in the right spot. Me and Chanel are different spots, and there's a good reason why. Chanel is healthy. He's in the freaking Tiger Woods miniature golf in and suites. Where what Down city east. you in? Kinston, North Carolina. I mean, that's kind of sick. Like hey, there's bar spots to stay. Okay, so so Kinston as a town, no disrespect if there's anybody from Kinston on here, like worst city I've ever been to probably as far as minor leagues goes. Like horrible, nothing around to eat, like just all around bad. That's a now, big swing. We're staying too. at a, a hotel called the Mother Earth uh, Motor Lodge. And like you walk up to it and you're like, okay, I can't believe this is where we're staying. But it actually isn't that bad. It's bad. Like the rooms are small. The like, I wish I could flip my camera on my computer, but like we got polka dot beds. Yeah. Okay, um, but I'm trading small rooms for freaking no bed bugs we, any day of the week. Hundred percent. And we got like there is mini golf out there and stuff like in like a pretty decent pool. Um, but like I'm pretty sure the crime rate's pretty high here, so like it's completely like barricaded. At least, you, at least you're protected. Oh uh, yeah, and I'm not in the studio because, like. A, a red-blooded American, I'm watching college baseball tonight. And to put it quite frankly, if you, you haven't been watching these games, unless you have a really good reason, you're a peasant. Because this this tournament has been awesome. It's still awesome. I'm currently watching Tennessee and Campbell, and I have Georgia Southern on. Tennessee-Campbell game is electric. They've just been hitting balls so far over the fence the entire game. It's Were you watching the Virginia game. game? Yeah, it was – well – so I was gonna say. So I have a lot of a lot of complaints about ESPN most of the time. Um, the fact that most of these games aren't on the main ESPN channels is quite ridiculous. But I will give them props for the. Uh, I don't remember what do you remember what the, the stream is called Shook that has them all. Um, damn it, uh, Squeeze Play. Yeah, it's awesome. The that stream is awesome. So yeah, I have the bottom TV on Squeeze Play. So it's just it's just rolling through the different games. So that that broadcast is sick. Uh, so shout out ESPN for that. But yeah, these regionals have been awesome. We're going to get into them here in a minute. We got some things to talk about first, though. First off, Schnelli looked like he had a good week first week back. Yeah, still got another one tomorrow, but been playing pretty good. So yeah, heck yeah, uh, two hits right off the rip. Yeah, that'll settle you. Um, oh, dude, I should have had a bomb today. Gosh. Lefty hung a slider and I crushed it. Wind was blowing in, but I also hit it like forty-eight degrees, so it was like a mile in the air. Yeah, but I thought it was gonna get out. The dude caught it at the track, but you know, I guess God's gonna make me work for my first one a little bit harder. So yeah, yeah, it needs to just be an absolute no doubter. This one should have been. It had it. A it was pole side too. He hung a slider up and in. I'll send you the video. Yeah, you're smelling it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then I had my first bullpen today, which was awesome. It was it was actually nuts what it did for me, um, just mentally, because I was like, for the last couple months, it's been like it's been so long since I've played baseball, it almost feels like it was just like a, a dream that I've done it before. Like it was almost like, yeah, that'd be cool if that happened for real. But it was like. I don't know. It's not like I didn't love baseball, but it's like I just – and you went through it too, Schnelly, when you were injured. But I guess you just forget that you do. Yeah. And then once I got on the mound and, like, let a few loose, yeah. it was like, oh, I, I actually do love this sport. And so now – Yeah, it's very ride. easy to forget that you actually like playing it and it's not just miserable all the time because you're hurt. Yeah. Like, it was, it was unbelievable. Like, I, I couldn't stop smiling once I got – the whole day I couldn't stop smiling and then I couldn't stop smiling once I got off. It was it, it just filled me with joy. So now I'm rocking yeah. the ice tray jersey for celebration. Came in. I mean, it's just been a great day. <laughs> Played 18, part 18. 
go check out Twitter, posted it. Um, yeah, so so good all around on the baseball front. It's been a while since we've been able to say that. So shout out. Love us. to hear it. Love to freaking hear it. Uh, speaking of things not going good on the baseball front, well, doesn't really involve baseball, but we had an awesome altercation at the major league level this past week that we must talk about. Tommy Pham versus Jock Peterson over fantasy football. Um, and if you listen to our last week's pod, you know we're both – all three of us are, are gung-ho fantasy football players, I guess, owners, fantasy football owners. Yeah. Whatever it is. We, we are serious about it. We are them. So I, I do understand. Yeah, we're him. Um, <laughs> I understand the beef. I don't understand why Tommy Pham was so mad. Listen, apparently Jock Peterson was keeping guys on the IR that were hurt. I don't understand why you're mad about that. Is, is, am I missing something, Should I think the reason why he was mad is because he didn't think of it first, I think was the deal, because Jeff Wilson's the player at question, which if Jeff Wilson doesn't have an IR next to his name, then football's not going on. And why are we upset um, about Jeff Wilson? Yeah, that's the thing. I don't really understand. Um, but Who's apparently Jeff fam, he's, he's like a running back for the 49ers. string running back for the Niners. Yeah, so apparently Fam had Jeff Wilson in another league that, and he didn't have him on the hour, and Jock had him on the hour in this league that they were both in together. So, gotcha. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I really know. Listen, I have my thoughts on Tommy Fam, but the guy, I think the public is seeing the guy's a little bit nuts. I mean, just to walk up and smack a dude in the outfield over fantasy football is outrageous. And that GIF he sent was hilarious that Jock Peterson sent. It was funny. It was a good ribbing, nothing personal. So, yeah, I mean, some guys some guys just want to be a victim and want to be mad. That's all I'll say about that. Um, but the fact that <laughs> that Tommy Pham just took a straight bullet at Mike Trout and all this, too, was, like, one of the funniest parts. He was just talking about it. He's like, yeah, Mike Trout sucks as commissioner. It's like <laughs> – um, You said that? Tommy Pham did. <laughs> he did? Yeah. Who was in this league, dude? This I don't know. Elite. But and he started crazy. talking about like you're messing with my money and blah blah. blah and it's like, bro, bro, he's a heavy he, hitter in Vegas, bro. He that's what he said. Yeah, he's so heavy, he got stabbed outside of a strip club. Yeah. He's a heavy <laughs> hitter there, bro. He's getting heavy hit. Sounds like. I would love to know what the buy-in is that he's so. Well, uh, clearly it's too much. <laughs> if you're getting that upset, it's too much money. Because yeah. like the dude's not broke you know like. no he's, he's played for like <laughs> nine years he's, he's very very wealthy yeah plenty wealthy clearly whatever the buying is is too much for him because it, it really upset the guy uh I, I just my my favorite part i think i've already said my favorite part so i guess my second favorite part is the fact that jock peterson just like does the interview and he'll just be so open about it. Like, I feel like if we brought him on this podcast, he'd just roll through everything that happened and, like, show us the text because that's literally what he was doing. He was just, yeah, I sent this to Tommy and blah, 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 like showing his phone to the reporters. That dude seems awesome. I couldn't imagine smacking him. But who knows? Who knows what I, what went down, but just nuts. And it, But it was sick. It was a sick beef. Oh, no, Tennessee pulling away. God. What they do? Um, Chip three run bomb probably all but does it. Listen, I've been really nice to Tennessee all year. It's made me sick. Um, I've and I, I do like the team a lot, and I like Coach Vitello. But seeing these shots of the, their crowd and the people that that are keep showing up on camera, and the fact that they play Rocky Top as soon as the ball comes off the bat, I want them to lose so bad. It, it's. I didn't like I, I didn't have a strong opinion on it at the beginning of the year, but now it's it's killing me. I need someone to beat them. There and it's, it has nothing to do with the players on the field. It's it's the arrogance in the stands. And the after they IQ. got upset too about Campbell posting that thing on Twitter, dude, there'll be balls in the dirt in this game, and the whole crowd's like, "Oh, come on!" Yeah, they just some yeah, just I saw point, that. They just pointed straight in the camera and dropped a nice f bomb. Yeah, that's that place needs to be humbled very quickly. Uh, who are they match up with in the super? <laughs> Georgia, Georgia Southern. Southern. <laughs> Southern boys will get them. 
Don't worry about it. Them Southern boys will get them. Southern will bring a crowd up there too. But no, nah, their sure. team is their team is awesome, and Coach Vitello seems like the coolest guy to play for ever. So I have no problem with people on the field per usual. Uh, but yeah, their their fans are something serious. Uh, one other thing in MLB that's going on that <laughs> we're not doing a streak and slumping today, but this is absolutely a slumping. Uh, so last, I think it was two years ago when Marcus Strowman was a free agent. He, uh, the Yankees were like pretty much the front runner to get him, and they didn't, and they didn't not sign him. I think it was like more on the Yankees. Well, he tweeted, which is bold to say the least. Um, he tweeted out on October 21st, 2020. Besides Cole, there are no current Yankee pitchers who will be anywhere in my league over the next five to seven years. Their pitching always folds in the end. That lineup and payroll should be winning World Series left and right. Yet, they're in a drought. LOL. <laughs> then a year later, he commented on it and said, this tweet will continue to age unbelievably well. LOL. Yankees currently yeah, have uh, the best rotation in baseball. Nestor Cortez has a 1-5. I think Jameson Tyon has like a 2-3. Cole obviously is Cole, and then Severino has below a 3. So, yeah, I mean, here, here's my issue with this, is Marcus Stroman is a guy who plays with a chip on his shoulder, which he should never lose. That's what makes him good. It's what – like he, he's kind of like – you know, you hear about Jordan, like, making stuff up to get him motivated. Like, I feel like a lot of this is, like, just him trying to motivate himself. But that was just so disrespectful publicly. Yeah. Like, completely disrespectful. And I, and I want to know how the exchanges go, like, when you play a team. Because one of my favorite parts about baseball is, like, playing other teams and, like, talking to the guys you know on the other side before the game and stuff. And even people you don't know, like Shag and BP, they're out there running, like, that's when you meet them. That's when you talk to them. I want to know what the other Yankee pitchers are thinking when they're playing wherever Marcus Stroman is on at the time, and they see him, and they're like, oh, screw this guy. He just straight up yeah. roasted me on Twitter last week. So, yeah, well, I, I don't have a problem with playing a chip on your shoulder, but dang, that was disrespectful. What do you think that, like, Talion and – was Nestor on the team in 2020? No, but Severino was a, a two-time All-Star. Like, some of those guys that weren't on the team, do you think they're, like – Pissed off about it. Like I, I doubt they care. Honestly, like yeah, it does. I can't. I can't imagine myself really caring about that. But like, like I said, when I saw the dude, I'd be like, like, why? Just that, why? he's also <laughs> said like multiple things in the past. Like people probably are just like, whatever. Yeah, like, now. like, like I said, I, I think like clearly he's a very good pitcher and he's been an all star and borderline Cy Young guy a couple years and the fact like he's kind of created these chips on his shoulder, which make him good, but you can do that and not be disrespectful to somebody else. Like you can, you can say Yankees will regret not signing me. Um, I feel like I could have really thrived in New York, something along the lines where you're kind of going at the Yankees organization and not the actual players. Oh, in the the rotation. Players? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that was kind of nuts when I read that. I think I remember when he tweeted that at the beginning and then now looking back, he deleted them though, by the way, they are deleted. So, you know, once you delete a tweet, it can never be found. Ever. Ever. Screenshots are dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's all. Well, one more thing. I talked about the rookies. We talked about rookies a little bit last week. They are continuing to go nuclear. Um, Nolan Gorman is a beast. Bobby's a beast. Mackenzie Gore went six shutout again tonight. He's a Just monster. 25 Ks in his last uh, three starts, I saw. He's a monster. Yeah, Julio's still a beast. Yeah, like it's it's fun seeing these guys that we grew up playing with and against, like get to the big leagues and then be big leaguers, you know? Alec freaking two home runs in a game the other day, right? Yep. Reed went six, shut out against the Yankees a couple nights ago. No, he didn't. He went four and four and two-thirds of like one-run ball. So he's still doing it. Yeah, a lot of young guys in the league. Future's, future's bright in the MLB even though some people were freaking out in May that, that guys were struggling. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about these regionals because they're awesome. Um, 
And before we get in the nitty gritty, Shook, you have something you want to talk about. Do you have the graphic pulled up? Ah, uh, shoot, I do not. Um, Let me try to find it. Forget so there are, there are it. Doesn't, don't bother pulling it up. <laughs> it doesn't need its own graphic. So there, I saw something on Twitter the other day that suggested. It's been floating around. Yes, it, it's been floating around that Oklahoma and Oklahoma softball should face Tennessee baseball. And for those of you that may not follow college softball, Oklahoma is 56, I believe, and two now on the year. Um, their only two losses were in the Big 12 title game to Texas that they lost in eight innings. And then the they lost to Texas earlier in the year for their first loss. Um, and it suggested that they should both play. And if they did, who would win? Now, you have an opinion? Yeah, I think that if there's a seven-game series, that Tennessee baseball would win seven times by ten runs. And they would all be four inning games and it'd be a ten run roll every single time. <laughs> That's what I think. Are they playing softball or baseball? I don't think it matters. Either baseball, one. it might be a twenty five run game. Yeah, I mean baseball has softball, no chance. it's ten. We really need Montana Fast to come on the pod. She's straight big. Well, here's this, my but... thing is like You need to be humbled. <laughs> I just I'm not even gonna get into it. <laughs> No, my, I mean, argument, I my argument is is that Oklahoma is so dominant that I think it would be more entertaining to watch them play Tennessee in baseball than it would be to watch them play in the World Series right now. I mean, I, I would think, watch it. If, if that's what I you're would asking, watch it I would too, but absolutely I watch every game of it. And I would live tweet it. But like I, I do understand like the dominance comparisons because they are dominating. I want to find a graphic of that. That's like the video stats, of Brittany Griner saying that she could beat Boogie Cousins one on one. Yeah, that's a little different though. That's that's a, like at least in baseball and softball, you're not physically like you can't just physically overpower someone. Like yes, you, I can physically overpower like the that. softball to go over two hundred. Okay, look yeah. at this though. Uh, so Oklahoma has got one, two, three, four. So, first off, their entire lineup is hitting over 300, like yeah. well over Okay, 300. they're hitting beach balls. Softballs <laughs> are beach balls. Dude, like, it doesn't they're matter. They're this big. They're this big. Yes, it does. It's, they're <laughs> this big. You can't miss it. Okay. I, their entire I, lineup. Saw, I brought it up in, in the room with all the dudes, and – Literally, we made the decision like there unless they hit it over the fence, they wouldn't be able to get a hit. It would be impossible with three out like the three outfielders, especially like. Well, I, I'm thinking like here, but also like the Tennessee outfielders covering the outfield on a softball field, even if it's softball, would literally be nothing would fall ever. So, yeah, I think ever. you're missing the main factor here. Who on earth would pitch a softball? Okay, I have another – dude, you could literally lob it up. Half those girls can't hit it, like, consistently out of the park. Are you kidding me? There's no <laughs> – Jocelyn Allo would How play Pepper have? with the right field wall at Tennessee. Okay, the right field wall. She doesn't uh, hit it. The left field there. wall, the it. center field wall. I sure. mean, she'd they, put some the, in – How problem. many home runs do they have? What's that? How many home runs do they have as a team? Numbers. They've hit 140 as of June 2nd. So as of going into the World Series, they've hit 140. Homers on a year? That seems yes. like a lot. That seems like so many. Jocelyn Allos hit 29, 30. <laughs> she hit she hit one today, so 30 on the season. Okay, so maybe she could. The equalizer is going to be no one can pitch on softball. Here's here's the problem with when you face Oklahoma is that, like, and they talked about it today if you watch the Texas game. Like, so Allo, the girl we were talking about, hits second in their lineup. Tiaria Jennings, who's a sophomore, hits third in their lineup. Like, if you walk um, Allo, you have to pitch to Jennings, who is a freaking beast. She had a grand slam on Thursday against Northwestern. So, like, there's no holes in that lineup. And, like, yeah, maybe baseball it's different, but. Okay, I, here. We'll I make, don't we'll think make Tennessee it. would have a problem hitting, but they would absolutely have a problem. Hold on, hold on. Let's, let's say this. You play on a softball field 
Okay. The girls pitch normal softball. The guys pitch with a softball, but they are allowed to throw overhand from ninety feet or from sixty feet. I don't know. There, that'd be domination by Tennessee baseball. Oklahoma's pitching staff, by the way, this is going into Thursday. It doesn't matter. Sure. Point eight three ERA in um, eighty eight total Should. appearances, three hundred twenty eight innings. They've allowed thirty nine earned runs. It's a beach ball. <laughs> dumb in. stats. You literally just have to freaking tap it, and it's going 200 it's, feet. That's the show stats right there. 442 strikeouts and 328 I would get innings. jammed and hit it 200 feet. I'll literally get one <laughs> off the fist and hit it 200 feet. I'm On not accident. arguing with you. I think Tennessee would beat them, but I'm just saying, like, this is absolute – insane it's crazy yeah, i get discussion. it they're freaking dominant for women's ncaa softball it's legit but to, to say that they can compete with tennessee baseball is ludicrous yeah i mean well the strength factor is definitely definitely one to consider in terms of the small fields with playing grown D- division one men like that's just that's just straight science but I that that's a more compelling case if if they throw overhand from sixty feet. I don't know how that would go, uh, but I do know how they would go if they actually had to pitch a softball. It would not go good for them. So I don't know. It, we will absolutely never know. But it's a great discussion. Uh, this is the last thing I'll do before we get over our interview with Jared Schuster. Uh, we went we went back to the Braves well because we like Shoemaker so much. Figure we throw another Braves guy on here. For the boys. Uh, so something arose the other day that was mind-blowing to me. So our first rounder in 2020, keep in mind the Rays invested in this kid. Cooper Kenny from Chattanooga, as much as I hate to say it, he's from my hometown. The kid door dashes a filet of fish from McDonald's to my house. I almost kicked him out. I said, I don't want that in my house. So then it created this discussion on fast food, and, and I was like, there's no way you think that is the best thing on McDonald's menu. Uh, and I want him to complete his case, but he's not at home right now. I'm just going to call him, see if he answers. But, yeah, this he got like an army of people trying to argue with me that filet of fish was the best thing on McDonald's yeah. menu. Coop, what's up? you're on the podcast right now. I want you to convince the people – that the filet of fish is the best thing on McDonald's menu. The filet of fish is the number one best item on the McDonald's menu, and there's no question about it. How do you how I do you mean, figure that? Literally, everything about it is just pristine. But you know, the thing that caps me off about it is the bun. I mean, it is the most pure, round and puffy bun to ever exist. And it by far tops. I mean, literally anything on the menu. You know, I'm freaking. Now happy. hold on, hold on, Coop, hold on. Now keep in mind this. This is the guy who thinks that McDonald's special orders buns specifically for the fillet of fish. He said that. Uh, there's something different about it. Yeah. So keep that in mind as you're listening. Anything else you got? It is, it is the best thing. I mean, just the combination of all this. The fish. I mean, I don't know what kind of fish it is, but. It, it, it's fresh caught in the Cape Cod, I think. Whatever it is, I need to wear a shirt. Incredible. All right, you're cutting out, but would you would you say that the fillet of fish is the best fast food item out there? Um, three. Number three. It's top three. Okay, I was about to say what's one and two. All right. Anyway, I, I appreciate that, Coop. I, I disagree with everything okay. you just said, but I appreciate you coming on. Fish fans out there somewhere. It's probably a special group of people. Sure All right. I'll see you later. What a moron. Yeah. There's, just, there's no way you can possibly believe that. I, I like, I, I wouldn't put it in my top 10, but I do like the filet of fish. I wouldn't get it like, nice I wouldn't get it. Here's my problem. Here was my argument the whole thing. I wasn't upset that he got a filet of fish. Like, whatever. You get a filet of fish, you're a sicko, but. You got one. And I like I know it's one of those foods you can look at and you know exactly how it tastes. So like the taste isn't the problem for me. 
the problem for me is you go to McDonald's and you order the filet of fish when they have everything else on their menu. That's what you land on. When I go to fast food places, I'm not going to get something they don't specialize in. I'm not getting chicken tenders at Taco Bell. It's disgusting. I'm not getting stuff that they don't. Spe- I'm not getting the freaking chilies at, or chili at Wendy's. I, I know everybody says it's good. I'm not getting it. It's gross. So I, I'm getting what they specialize in. And McDonald's is not specialized in fish. So that's disgusting. Anyway, that brings up the whole discussion that we're bringing who I announced as our new TikTok manager off the bench to insert into this draft we're about to have. Griffin Rudy. Griffin, welcome to the pod. Hey, glad to be here. Glad to be here. What a great topic to, to start off on. And listen, this is this wasn't random. There was this wasn't a random reason I brought Griffin in for this specific draft. While we were in college, Griffin was my roommate in college. We've grown up together. Um I secretly tallied his diet for a week without him knowing. I'll read you the first three days. I'm not going to do the whole thing. Hold on. Before we get into this, did y'all freaking plan to wear jerseys tonight? I mean, I always wear jersey. I just put one on because I thought it'd be cool. It is It is cool. <laughs> it absolutely it is, is cool. cool. Yeah. What are you Celtics, watching? Let's go. That Larry, Larry Bird, Bird, one out of my Larry Bird Celtics. Celtics. Let's yeah, go no, I, State. I used to not be a jersey guy, but I wore it on the pod, and now I've ordered like 12. I have an elite crop coming in soon. But anyway, listen to this and try not to throw up. Griffin's Mills. I didn't date this, but it says February 5th, 2021. <laughs> Monday, breakfast in a lunch, Chick fil A, two chicken sandwiches, no pickles, fries, and a Coke. Dinner, Wendy's, two day singles, asked for large fry, but they forgot it. Snack, <laughs> Skittles, Coke. <laughs> Tuesday, breakfast, Lucky Charms. Lunch, Five Guys, cheeseburger plain, Cajun fries, large Coke. Dinner, Chick fil A, chicken sandwich, no pickles. Large fry, large Coke. Snack, Skittles, Coke. <laughs> Wednesday, breakfast, Chick-fil-A, chicken mini meal, four count. Lunch, 20 microwave chicken nuggets with Coke. Supper, <laughs> McDonald's, two McDoubles plain with cheese, large fry, and a Coke. Snack, late night McDonald's, 12 a.m., large fry, large Coke. And the kid weighs a buck 80. It's unbelievable. He's, he's, That's elite. He's literally fueled by grease. Like, that is elite, though. I'm if just he, different, man. I if don't he ever if he ever speeds up his normal body functions, it just burns grease like his fuel. Nasty. Yeah, but I mean, so that's why. Different. That's why I figured he was certified to participate in this fast food items draft that we're about to partake in because clearly he knows the menus. No, I absolutely do. Um, <laughs> let's to start off this draft. We need an order. Let's do it. Um, in order of the cities that we're in, alphabetical order. Shit, where you at? I'm in Ringgold, Georgia. Griff? I'm in Ringgold as well. Oh. Yeah. I'm in well, – Little if, if I was in Athens right now, I'd definitely be first. Yeah, that's good. Schnell? I'm in Kinston, North Carolina, so I go first. So you're first. I'm in – Port Charlotte, so I go last. Uh, what, what street are you on, Shook? I'm on Robert Ely Drive. Griff? Haven. Haven Drive. Right. So you go second. I go last. We're going to do a snake draft, four picks, starting with Schnell, the number one overall pick in the fast food item draft. The easiest pick of my whole entire life, Chick-fil-A sandwich. Yeah, that had to it's be a good it. One. A good one. <laughs> it's the best fast food restaurant and the best, the best meal there is, so. Hats off to your pick. Thank you. Didn't even need any explanation. No, um, I didn't did need an explanation. Second pick in the first round. Is it me? It's me. Yep. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going McDonald's fries. It's the best fries yeah. in the game. It's you know I feel like that's got to be two. You know, like if I if I'm going somewhere to get fries, I'm going to McDonald's. I'm not going anywhere else. Funny story. Uh so. I ate pretty good this week, no flex. But today after the bullpen, I'm like, I'm getting McDonald's. So on the way home from golf, I pick up McDonald's. I get a large number seven. And I get home. The cheeseburgers are there. There's no fries. I packed my stuff up. I got back in my truck. I rode back to McDonald's and got the fries. It was 
it was not even a, it wasn't even worth getting if I didn't have the fries with it. So I nah, that pick. You, you have to have the fries. Uh, Shook, what you got for us? Hmm. Um, I'm gonna go with a. Um, I'm gonna go a little out of the box here. I'm gonna go with an Arby's curly fry. Okay. Do you get Arby's a lot? I had it for lunch today, actually. Oh. It's about a That's once disgusting. every two or three weeks. <laughs> that, that, that didn't fit into Griffin's rotation of disgustingness, but I don't despise Arby's. I just don't go out of my I like Arby's. Today. Arby's is decent. Not decent. a fan. But I mean the fries are good. Like I'm not I'm not gonna see yeah, act like the fries, fries are fine, good. You know. Um, okay. My choice. I'm gonna go. And this, this is, so we're all on the same page. This is like menu items, right? Yeah. Okay. My first pick is the Wendy's 4 for 4. Damn, I was going to pick that one. Okay, yeah. good. So it does qualify. To make sure. Good pick. Yes. Um, and my second one is a Dairy Queen Blizzard. Mm. I think I think those are both justified. 4 for 4 is one of the best meals in ever deals um and then yeah that you go to the blizzards there's something about them i don't know they're just the ice cream's on crack it's the best so that's that's my two picks back to shook um i recently discovered this not too long ago and i freaking eat it every time um not as off the wall i'm going with a steak chalupa from taco bell because i there's something about those things, man. Not even number one at Taco Bell. I was wondering if Taco Bell would make an appearance. It wasn't coming from me. So. Yeah, it no, may make either. a second appearance for me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I eat there often. <laughs> Just Shook's Shook's Taco picture. Bell Dynasty. All of Chick's picks are coming off the board from like two bottom tier fast food restaurants. Taco Bell and Arby's. <laughs> I don't appreciate the Taco Bell slander. There's, there's, there's a Taco Bell cult out there. Uh, I was never a part of that, but it is, it is real. Uh, Griff. All right. Uh, next pick. I'm trying to decide between two. I don't know if one really qualifies. Five Is five guys fast food? I feel like it's not. Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah it's it in fast there. Food. All right. Well, then I'm going with the, the five guys cheeseburger. That's the best cheeseburger in the fast food game. There's, there's no better tasting cheeseburger. It's expensive, but. Yeah. I can I can get behind that. It is good, very good. Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty fire. You get what you pay for. Uh, Schnelli, two picks to you. Is uh is Chipotle considered fast food? Uh, I would consider that fast food. All right. I think if Five I'll, Guys is fast food, then Chipotle. I'll allow it. All right. Well, now things have changed. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go. A chicken bowl from Chipotle. Okay. And then I'm going to stick with Chick-fil-A and go with their nuggets. Nuggets. Doubled up on chicken. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm tripled up on chicken. I'm a protein beast. Yeah, you are. That's where the backside juice comes from. Straight straight Chick-fil-A. Griff, back to you. I'm going to go with another Chick-fil-A. I think it's the best breakfast menu item on the planet. There's no better fast food breakfast menu item. Chick-fil-A chicken biscuit. Goated. Wow, I thought you were going minis. Chicken oh, minis are better. Oh, you always get minis. minis I, I, I get think minis. With you, it was on the freaking notes. No, I always get minis, but I always I feel like the chicken biscuit is like more it iconic. Is, well, here's no, the problem. Chicken here's minis problem. are better. Okay, I – I have a couple things on this as an avid Chick-fil-A breakfast goer myself. It's always funny to me when adults get chicken minis for some reason. I don't know why. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it, and they taste really good, but it's, it's always funny to me when you get chicken minis. The biscuits at Chick-fil-A can be hit or miss. And when they're good – I was just about to say that. When they're good, nothing's beating them. They're the best biscuit out there. But sometimes they get a little dry. I always got a nice – Nice butter to them, but they, they can get a little dry every now and then. I'm not one to complain about them, though. 
Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm a fan of the chicken biscuit pick. This turned into a Chick Fil A draft. Uh, Shook, throw some more Taco Bell on the list. Give us some diversity. My heart almost dropped when he said Chick Fil A breakfast, so I'm gonna take the chicken minis. Ah, there it is. We're going yeah. back to back. I can't. Um, something about the bread. Yeah, no, the bread is different. The bread is good, but mm. I think the bread to chicken ratio is a little off. That's the my it problem is. with chicken minis. Uh, I will say about the chicken minis too. Something about them, dude. They tear up my stomach after I eat those. <laughs> oh, I don't know why. I don't know if it's like the it's butter. It's got to be the bread because they tear my stomach up. It's the only thing different about them. Did you know that they sell like a ten-piece chicken mini? Not oh, yeah. in some places. I swear it's not in some places. My brother gets that, and I was kind of yeah. That that's a, that is a game changer. These should just be three and four. That's ridiculous. Yeah. The fact that there's been what, what four? Has there been four chicken? Or Chick Fil A picks four Chick Fil A items, but three just went back to back to back. The fact that one of them has got to me is mind blowing, and I'm gonna pick them. Spicy gonna... chicken sandwich. No, 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 no. It is. I mean, that is my go-to. Cole is a spicy chicken sandwich guy. Chick Fil A every time. Yeah, I mean, they, they it is elite with with cheese though. With cheese, you do always get the cheese. Let me let me run something by y'all. Because I looked up a list and it counted it, and I want to see if y'all do. Is Krispy Kreme fast food? No, I I, I looked at that same list, and I think I think it is. I, I was gonna put it, but I almost I didn't. But all right, yeah. Schnell says no. Griff says yes. You're the final vote, Shook. Mm, that's Krispy tough. Kreme I mean, fast it's not food. A you, go a dri- you go through a drive-through and you get it in like it five is, minutes. It it's got to be fast food. It, it is. is. The Krispy Kreme glazed donut yeah. is my third round choice. And my fourth round choice, which is mind blowing to me, Chick fil A waffle fries. Ugh. If you eat them at the right time, they're good. I'm going to be honest with you. The two fries that I've taken are, are not even like top two on my fry list. McDonald's? McDonald's, McDonald's is are... number one for me, for sure. No. Yeah. When I will say that the Chick Fil A fries, when they get cold, they are terrible. What why most fries awesome? are, why, but they yeah, are what like, fries are good cold? I don't know. Something about None. the like Chick Fil A fries when they're cold, like it's like uneatable. Well, I, yeah, well, I'm not eating them when they're cold. I eat them when they're fresh, and they are delicious. I mean, I'm so biased, but I just absolutely wax this draft. Um, back to you, <laughs> Shook. Um, let me get a Wendy's Frosty. Yeah, Dang was, it, I, dude, I, I almost went with that, but I didn't, I didn't want three desserts. I did not want three desserts, but yeah, that was that was I on my list. I was going to make it back to me for my last pick. <laughs> I'm so disappointed right now. <laughs> dude, that was my sleeper. I literally put in the group message. I thought there was no chance anybody thought it about that. It was on that. my list. I, and if, if y'all want a kind of Krispy Kreme, I was taking it. So. Dang it. Good pick, shit, clearly. <laughs> Clearly good. For yeah. Sure. Great good last pick. Better make it good. Yeah. I, I'm going to go back to the drawing board right now. No, I'm not. I am. I'm not no, no, I've had, oh, <laughs> I was about to say, I've had this pick. Um, I've, I've went like kind of like not value on the first three, you know, strictly, you know, like oh, you're going for some quality. Here I'm going for a little value here. The McDouble, goaded item at McDonald's, cheap. Great. You know, it's it's a go-to for me. It is good. I got one tonight. Um, the, but, so I went to the menu, or I went to the window, and uh, mine was like 10 bucks. I, I must have jumped somebody in line, and they were like 17 50 or whatever. I'm like, I don't think that one's me. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, my bad, my bad. She was like, it is weird, though, because our prices have jumped. And I was like, they've jumped? And she was like, yeah, they they just recently jumped. So I didn't pay much attention, but if that's the case, that's tragic. That that's when I'm going to put my foot down to the government. When McDonald's well, starts raising their hamburger prices, we got to do something about it. No, I'm calling Mc, you Mc, out, Congress. <laughs> McDouble's <laughs> did used to be a dollar, and I think they're like a dollar twenty nine now. I think it's I think it's two ninety nine. Is what it McDouble was. McDouble for for two. I, that can't be right. When I looked at my receipt. When I made sure and see if the prices were changed, I think it said two ninety nine. I can go try to dig it out of the trash while Chanel's thinking. Yeah, I will. Y'all, Chanel, you draft. I'm gonna go try to dig out the trash. 
Dude, I don't even care now. <laughs> that had an awful is, draft, by the way. That was not good. This draft is is over for me. I'm so just in shambles right That's now. That's what you get for disrespecting Oklahoma softball. <laughs> there was no disrespect. It was just a. It's a ludicrous thing to say I'm that so, a softball team can be. I'm just kidding. <laughs> a baseball team, dude. I'm freaking rattled. Uh, dude. That's a good one. I just one. I haven't took one yet, dude. There's okay, there's two it. options that I have. I just found one online. And then there's another one. So the two options I got are Subway Cookies. Good one. Or a Crunch Wrap Supreme. I would go Crunch Wrap Supreme, but the only reason I'm not gonna go with it probably is because I'll get one every once in a while, and it's just the worst. Like Taco Bell workers are so disrespectful about the way they make their food. <laughs> like they they show no respect. Half of the freaking Crunch Wrap Supreme is like full, and the other half is straight sour sour cream and freaking hard taco. And I'm like, why you don't what am I eating? Taco Bell. So, so I'm gonna because of the disrespectful workers, I'm gonna go with the Subway cookies. We're really standing up to the man tonight. I am <laughs> outrageous. You know? No, I, I feel that though. My receipt must have my, must have got lost in the fries debacle from earlier. I could have literally walked in there. I had the receipt in the hand to show them. I could have walked in there and told them I bought anything. I was like, hey, I got a large fry. Oh, you need one? I'm like, yeah. Didn't show them the receipt. Grabbed it, threw in the bag. Should have been like, I got two apple pies, three fries, and a burger. I miss it. <laughs> if yeah, I would have gotten they, a fifth pick, I would have taken an apple pie. Yeah, no, it's up there, dude. They're they are elite there, and they have no business being good in a box. Like you guys that. see yourself in the freaking hotel background right there. I do. I do see myself. If you're right on there. YouTube watching, look at that. It's crazy. That is crazy. That's science. You guys have hit me at peak tiredness after six or five games this week. Yeah. Peak tiredness. You feel like you're this is, right now? This is, uh, yeah, this is literally like <laughs> grind time for me right now. This is, this is more tired in, than I'm your first week of having a American, child. I'm about to put in an all-American game tomorrow just for the DNR people. Nice. This will what's what's crazy is they won't hear this till Wednesday, so we'll be able to well, see. You go it. look at the box score from Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> what, what if you throw up a freaking hat trick? I won't. <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible. I won't. All right, Shook, you gonna freaking get us the graphic for that draft? Yes, I will. Hey, did you write them down? Dude, I don't even yeah. don't even put mine on there. You, it's ruined. Mine is terrible. I thought I was going to do much better than I did. I'm telling Shook. you, I, I've, this, this the second you took curly fries, pick number three. <laughs> I'm not taking it. I'm not taking the RB slander. I'm not taking no, it. No, I liked Arby's, but like, the did you get a potato shake cake instead of a curly fry? Yeah, probably. Jamoka shake. Ridiculous. I can't believe Schnell didn't get anything from KFC. He's the only person I know that like <laughs> actually go, goes out of his way to go there for like quick. Dude, a like, I would never bowl? think about like that's not even fast food to me. That's like if you need a bucket of chicken for a group. Bro, KFC. famous bowls. Famous bowls are gas. Carson dad, Williams, our first rounder from last year, literally was eating KFC tonight. My dad just had a tooth pulled and he had to go to KFC because he could only eat like mac and cheese and mashed potatoes and the Famous inside bowl. of a biscuit, like the soft part. Yeah. That's all he got. It was $20. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the KFC way. <laughs> Dude, Shook, you should have gone with the Jamoka shake if you're going to go with something from or from Arby's. The Jamoka shake is elite. I have swear, you ever had if that? If you get potato cakes instead of curly fries... No, what the heck are potato cakes? curly fries for sure, but it's like this but, triangled shape. It's like a hash, uh, not a you hash literally brown. could have picked a billion other things other than Arby's. okay. Well, hold on, Shane. I want I wanted to ask you this. You said it's not even your top two fries. Why don't you give us your list of fries? Wendy's yeah. number one. Oh my number god, two, no. number it's, two, it's 
Popeye pick. I don't know if I've ever ate Popeyes in my life. I don't. I haven't. Popeyes I don't think. Fire. Popeyes. If fire, you're from the south know. and you get Popeyes, you ain't from the south. You get Chick Fil A in the south. I'm so. not from. I'm not from the south. <laughs> you get God's chicken down here, dude. I would get. Yeah. Okay, Chick Fil A fries are probably up there. Probably, I would say they're one or two, but McDonald's is not for me. Wendy's is one one. That's Wendy's wild. fries are they're good, but they're I don't... terrible. 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 They're much half, better half than the they ones, used to be. Half the ones you get are not like are half fried. They're still they still have a little frozen in them. Yeah, they got you a little know those freaking, ones. They got no. You know they those ones you bite into, in and they literally have a little frozen left in them. They're a little bit. No, ones. I've never had that, but there's some. Yeah, they're ones. not cold, but they're a little bit like. It's almost like you're eating a carrot. <laughs> There's some flaccid <laughs> ones in there for sure, but those ones are good. You're nasty. You're a fillet of fish guy. The fact that if Cooper was in this draft, he would have taken fillet of fish makes me sick. He would have taken should, it one should one. Mention taking the McRib in the. What happened there, Shook? Did, <laughs> yeah. did you pivot from your? No, McRib? that was just a hypothetical. Okay. I wasn't going to pick the McRib. You no. should have taken the McRib. <laughs> you would have got. I almost took a. Snack That's a pander out. pick. If you would have taken like, like picks that certain groups, uh, really like, so like the McRib yeah. or the Mexican pizza at, at Taco Bell, like that have like real cult followings that just like a few people love. You might could have won this day. I'm trying to think of another one. I, I should have picked the Mexican fish. pizza. Dang. Have you seen Do the sign mind? outside of? Well, never mind. You guys don't need to talk about. Well, apparently, There's a sign outside I do. Bell, I love Taco Bell. My dad doesn't eat at Taco Bell, but he goes just because they have the Mexican pizza back, and they were sold out at the one in Ringgold. Yeah. So Dude, look at let Baja me. Baja Blast is elite. That's what I. Okay. Yeah. Thinking. Yeah. No, that would have been a good pick. That is, let me see if I can find this sign that they have. Can I take my Subway cookies back and get Baja Blast, please? You cannot. Thanks for asking, though. So this sign right. says that love is all-consuming, and it consumed all the Mexican pizzas. We <laughs> underestimated your love. Sold out. I said, that, awesome I said that to my parents. I was like, what does this even mean? That's an awesome sign. I, I dig it. I dig that sign. Uh, we didn't even like – we didn't talk about the region. I was so excited for this fast food draft. We didn't talk about specifics on the regional. I had a couple things to talk about. Number one, it's electric. Number two, my heart goes out to Kennesaw State fans around the world. Um, they were up 11-4 to four on LSU in the eighth inning. Kennesaw State, who was getting bashed for being a three seed. Taking LSU to the woodshed for eight innings. Gave up a 10 spot in the eighth and lost. Unbelievable. Absolutely. R.I.P. Um, there were some other good games yesterday. I'm trying to think of all of them. New Mexico State gave – Oregon State, all they wanted. Walk off, walk. That is a bummer. Um, VCU right now, I think VCU's in the championship. I think they pulled it off. They, they waxed Georgia last night, and then I think they're in the championship now. But, yeah, if seriously, I know you're not hearing this until Wednesday, and I guess you'll have to watch. Oh, my gosh, Shook. Auburn is beating Florida State by two touchdowns. 21 to 7. Crazy. Arkansas has come back on Oklahoma State. It was they were losing most of the game. They're up 16 to 10. Oh my gosh. That Columbia yeah. upset pick's not looking too good either. No, nah, it looked awesome yesterday, <laughs> didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it did. I thought I was a genius yesterday when I took it and they won. They were up in this down. game too, I believe, against Virginia they, Tech. They were. They were, they were up to losing by 20. Other than that, let's get over the interview. But like I said, watch college baseball because you will enjoy it. And no no lead is safe ever. Florida State's about to put up 15 in the bottom of the ninth. Right? True. Yeah, no unwritten rules. They need to freaking keep stealing up 21 to 7. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we'll get back to you on – who's going to be the flashback pick this week or flashback pod for the week? Want to go Wayno? Yeah, Wayno. Good one. Got to get him out there. The man, the myth, the legend. ERA goes down as the years go up. Uh, yeah, so y'all get weighed on Saturday. Have that to look forward to. Uh, catch, catch this interview with Schuster up next. I don't think Schnelli was on that one. Who are you, Schnelli? No. You're playing. I was too busy hitting Me and Shook, 
Yeah. So it was a really good one. He has some awesome stuff. We broke down some film, all that jazz. So let us know if you like it and uh, let us know who won the draft. As always, stay sparkly. All right. We now welcome on a special guest, uh, Braves, former first round pick, uh, lefty Jared Schuster. Jared, what's going on, man? How you guys doing? Shoot, we're doing pretty good. Pretty good. Um, and uh, this is completely unrelated to baseball. I guess it's kind of related to baseball. But so I'm looking looking up some of your stuff and and obviously seeing the stats doing really well this year. But Wikipedia says now you can confirm or deny this. It says you're a six five sixty guy. Uh, I don't know about that anymore. I think uh, when I was playing the field like two way in, in college and in high school, I think. Um, my freshman year, that's what I ran, but I don't think I can do that right now. But I haven't tried in a while. Yeah, that, that's impressive. That's some speed. Uh, so you you did two way at Wake Forest. Yeah, for my freshman fall. Then after that, they just they just decided to let me just pitch. Yeah, that's the classic right there. Yeah, the classic. You can two way to get you on campus, and then after the fall, they're like, nah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're, happens, you're happens a pitcher, to a lot of guys. No, it happens. Yeah, it definitely happens to a lot. Um, so yeah, let's just—I guess we can start there and talk about uh, the Wake Forest experience. Um, I was like, I got to thinking. Uh, obviously, obviously, you came out of there, and y'all had some good players. But we've got a couple of guys here that we took last draft: um, Bobby Seymour and Antonio Menendez. So y'all had a y'all had a pretty good squad while you were there. Yeah, we definitely did. Um, we had a lot of talent over there. We didn't, fortunately, we didn't make it to a regional or anything, but. We definitely had some good team, uh, good teams there and facilities that were really, really uh, helpful as well. Yeah, and are you from the Boston area? Is that right? Yeah, I'm from uh, about an hour hour from Boston. Okay, so what what was the big pull to Wake Forest? Uh, I think like growing up in the Northeast, you always want to head down down south for for yeah. college and like ACC, SEC is always um, like the goal. And uh, with my travel team, uh, we had a couple other guys come into Wake Forest, and uh, it was good education. And uh, having some people there that I already knew going there, um, that was a big, big key. And then the, their facilities that they were built, all building that were there when I was there, it was all it was all a uh, good package. Gotcha. Yeah, because I can imagine it's probably still pretty cold there in there in fall, or I guess late fall, and when you come back to school for. Uh... The beginning, like the the three weeks, that's like the worst three weeks of college baseball. The inner squads right before the season. Yeah, that, I'd imagine it's still pretty cold then. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The first couple of weeks of the season, and, and then those inner squads, they get they get pretty cold, like in the forties. Yeah, um, and so you get to Wake Forest. Um, did you were you a starter from freshman to junior year, or was it come out of the pen in the beginning? Uh, in the beginning, I started off as the midweek guy. Uh, had some freshman struggles, uh, so I would start some midweeks and then come out of the pen sometimes. Uh, sophomore year, I was a starter, and then junior year, I was a starter. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I, I saw some of those. You talked about freshman struggles, which I think I feel like we all go through uh, in college. Uh, what What do you think the biggest the biggest hurdle to overcome from high school to college was? Was it the workload? Was it just – the strict like the competition what do you think what, what do you think it was uh i think uh, a little bit of both like the workload and, and the competition i think um just getting used to throwing against college hitters like yeah where i went to high school like there was good competition but it wasn't like the acc or anything like that so it was definitely a pretty big adjustment and then like the workload like like you know they have us at the field yeah, for for hours and on top of schoolwork and stuff. So that was definitely a big, a pretty big adjustment. Yeah, no doubt. The, the workload for me was, yeah, I guess it was probably the toughest. Um, obviously, the competition was tough, but just trying to trying to balance everything. And then obviously, you you try to just when you get to the baseball field, you try to just focus on baseball. And even yeah. now, like we got stuff going on in our lives, but the baseball field is kind of the place where you take take everything away and just focus on that. But it, it can get tough when, when you have that much new stuff on your plate. Uh, so after after your freshman year, um, you identify some things that you probably need to work on. What what was the biggest thing you focused on from that summer going into the next year? Uh, from freshman to sophomore year? Yeah. Uh, just throwing my off speed for strikes. 
that was something I really struggled with my freshman year. So there's no fastballs coming in. Um, they'd be all over it. So just focusing on throwing change up for strikes, throwing a, a breaking ball for a strike. Yeah. And that was that you think it was a confidence thing or more of a feel thing? A little bit of both for sure. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, in high school, I didn't really need like a, like a breaking ball or anything. So it took me a little while to develop the feel for it. Um, and then change up. I could just get guys to chase, chase it like out of the zone, but the college hitters got better and would take in yeah. stuff. It wasn't a strike. Yeah. Uh, so now, now let's get this some fun stuff because this is when I met you was in between sophomore and junior year. We we're on the same team in the Cape. Um, and I think, I think we all saw you kind of, really start to improve as as that season went on uh would you would you say that was one of your biggest steps in development yeah i, I think so um i think our manager there kelly nicholson was a, was a big help towards all of us he really uh made like a big emphasis on like the mental game and like how to like be a pro and approach things so i think being there with him and then with troop and I mean, all, all the rest of you guys there in the on the pitch and stuff was a big help. Yeah, we had we had a good time in the K. We had some characters on the squad. Um, but this is a funny story. We were when I was at the alternate site in San Diego. We were at the University of San Diego, and you mentioned Troop. Matthew Troop was our pitching coach in the Cape. Um, I was I was just walking home from the field one day, and he rolls up. He's in he's in his car, rolls up, rolls the window down. Hey. So I walk over there and start talking to him. And he gets hired there as the uh director of player ops. And so then I spent the whole summer with him. Like he's out there shagging with us, like doing stuff. So so it was pretty cool. It just randomly happened where he got hired at the school. Yeah, that's that, awesome. that I was practicing at. But then I think he's in Hawaii now. Is that right? Yeah, I I haven't heard from I haven't talked to him in a little bit, but I saw him. Like tweeting about hope some Hawaii stuff. So I, I, yeah, I, I saw a clip one time I think, and it flashed the dugout. And he was chilling in there. Yeah. That's not a bad gig. Yeah, that's a pretty good gig. That's a good spot to be in. Yeah. So I mean, the Cape is like such a different place. Where you go from college, where I mean, you got really nice facilities. You're staying in nice places. You go to the Cape, and it's all the best players in college baseball, and you're out there fixing your own mound after the game's over. Yeah. Did that did that take an adjustment? Just kind of like because we played on what Orleans Middle School field. Yeah, something like that, or the high school. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of an adjustment, is it not? To kind of go to those fields, kind of like you're playing uh, rec ball again. Yeah, it's kind of it's got an old school feel to it, but it, it's kind of kind of have a little fun with it. Yeah, like, for sure, because the the competition is like second to none. Yeah. But it's just weird because you're you're playing on. I remember I don't know the exact dimensions of our field, but it was like. 315 to left and 450 to yeah 450 (laughs) (laughs) i remember the last game i threw there there was the fog set in pretty pretty heavily and there was a pop-up to right field and nobody could see it yeah i remember and it it hit the ground and people were like kicking around trying to find the ball (laughs) but we were in the fifth and we needed to finish the fifth for the game to count so it was like we got to figure out how to get out here. <laughs> yeah, you got screwed. I remember that. <laughs> Did y'all ever have any fog outs? Uh, well, over there, nah, I don't think so. I think that was the the only day that it was yeah. like that. Yeah. So, I mean, we talked about some of the development that happened in the Cape. Um, was there a certain pitch or anything that that you can kind of go back and say that, like, learning this in the Cape is what helped me kind of fly off the draft boards. Um, I think, uh, I mean, mentally, uh, Skip, like, Skip helped a lot, like Kelly Nicholson. I think he did a really good job with that. And I think there I really learned how to get the feel for, like, throwing three pitches for strikes. Yeah. Just, like, attacking the zone with those three pitches. Yeah, because, I mean, you – I remember your games were just quick. Like, it was it was like you go five and, and just – like an hour, like you were just pounding the zone. And I would, I would assume that being able to do that in a league like that really boosted your confidence in being able to throw all three of those during the season. Yeah, it, it did for sure. I was, I was definitely a big help and a big confidence boost. So, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you didn't come to the Cape 
as as like labeled like a first round pick, right? No, not at all. So if I remember right, there was a pretty big velo jump from when you were throwing the cape to the fall and spring. Yeah. Does that when did you start noticing that velo ticking up? Was it the fall? Uh so I didn't throw that fall. Um like me and a couple other weekend starters, uh Antonio too. Yeah took that fall off and we just kind of worked on our deliveries. Um, gave it a good amount of time. Got on a Antonio, good... Antonio worked on his four deliveries. Yeah. <laughs> all, all three arm slots. <laughs> um, but uh, we were all lucky to, to work with our pitching coach there, John Hendricks. Um, and he really created a really good plan for us to work on our deliveries, give us a fly routine throwing programs. And um, I think all, just about all those guys gained some velo from it. Yeah. Um, that the other first rounder, Brace, first rounder, Brian Cusick was part of that group that took the fall off. And we also had a lot of good benefits from it. So you think it was just kind of hitting some maintenance areas that you probably have never really focused on before? Yeah, um, I think uh, just like working on moving better, just like rotating better, loading better. Um, I think I never really, never really had done that before and gotten yeah. the fit for it. Um, so just doing that all fall and, staying consistent with it definitely helped a lot. Yeah. And, it, and it's nice when you do that kind of stuff and see instant results, because like part of being a professional athlete is trying to figure out a regiment that works best for you. And it's hard because a lot of times you don't see those instant results. So you're like, man, I wonder, I wonder if I'm at a good weight right now. And I wonder if all this stuff. So I would assume that like, after seeing what it did, you've carried some of those things with you on your career now that you were doing during that time. Yeah, for sure. Um, I definitely uh, still work on those things um, and definitely taught me a lot. Like you gotta like feel it yourself to, to be able to ch make changes and like every pitcher is their own pitching coach. Cause like in pro ball, most of the time you gotta work, work through stuff on your own. And yeah. And um, like, you know, your delivery best. So just being able to learn everything so you could uh, keep going with it. Right. Yeah. That's, that's what I've always said I think is, is the biggest benefit of college, especially when you got the right pitching coach like you're talking yeah. about. Like clearly you really respected the guy you were with. Um, you just – there's just so many tools you get. Like it's not like you get fixed, but they give you so many options in college where you can you can take what you really like and then yeah. take it through the rest of your career. For sure. Uh, so what, what was it like when you got this new toy, when you start throwing 96? Was it like – was it like a keys to a new car you couldn't control or did you have it – Pretty in the zone right when you had it. Uh, I think all that stuff, like, it, it made me throw harder and it made my command better. Um, okay. Just, like, more consistent. Um, I think, like, that year, I know it was a shortened year, but um, I think I only had, like, four walks or something. Um, yeah. So, I think just moving better, I, I had me more consistent in the zone and uh, had my command better putting pitches where I wanted to. Okay. Yeah, that's that's pretty it's interesting. Not, you you don't sure. hear that much. So you so working on your mechanics and cleaning all that up obviously helps your command and then it gained you some velo too. So they kind of went hand in hand. Because yeah. for me, when I was in like high school and I was adding velo, I wasn't really doing much. I was just kind of growing. I couldn't control the dang thing. Like I'd figure out by the end of the year, like, okay, I, I've got it down. And the next year I come back, get a three mile an hour velo jump, and then I can't control it again. So I like, guess that's like the best case scenario where you focus on some mechanical issues and, and clean all that up. And then the velo comes with it. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was definitely uh, fun, fun to see. Like, yeah, uh, for sure. See that the work uh, we all did the off season pay off pretty good. Did you, so once you saw that, did you change the way you used your fastball a little bit? Did you rely a little heavier on it or was it kind of the same? Uh, it's kind of similar. I think um, just made my off speed pitches better. Yeah. Uh, I think like guys couldn't just sit off speed or anything like that. They had to be on time for the fastball. And I think um, it, it definitely made my fastball better just command wise. Cause I could like pound the pound inside corner or pound glove side, um, arm side, just, just, uh, and like I said earlier, just made the off speed better cause guys couldn't sit on it. Yeah. Um, and, and obviously I know you were always a very motivated guy and uh, always took, took pride in your work but there had to be like in the back of your mind when you when you saw that like you saw what you were putting out and you saw the velo jump 
there had to be there had to be something in your mind where you're like, this could be like a real future here. Like I, I'm if I focus in on this, I could make some real money. Did that kind of motivate you some more throughout going into the season? Yeah, I mean, I think um, even even like before the season, like when we got on the campus in the fall, like before we did all that stuff, I think that was like in the back of my head, just yeah, because I knew it was like draft, junior year, draft year, so mm-hmm. I knew I had to go all in and uh, just work every day to to uh, have a good season and try mm-hmm. to get taken high. And clearly, it paid off. Like you go to the Braves in the first round. What was what was kind of the build up to that? Was it, did you kind of know the Braves are right there or was it a pretty stressful day leading up? Um, so the Braves had talked to me like a decent amount that, that week coming up to the draft. So I, I had a decent feeling that they were pretty interested. Um, but either way, it was a pretty stressful day. Like, I don't think I got too much sleep the night before. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I don't know how you you felt about that. You probably didn't get much either. No, um, yeah, it's it's stressful, man. Like it's it's tough. You we've had this conversation on here before where you you talk you you're doing everything like you talked about. You're thinking about the draft in September and you're you're working for it and you're like, man, I can't wait for that day. Then when the day comes, like the numbers that you see on the screen with all the zeros, you're like, Oh, that's real money. Like yeah. that this is for real at this point. And it kinda like it kinda gets in your stomach and you're like, dang, this could yeah. be this could be big time. Yeah, and you get stressed out with every pick. And it's a stressful yeah. day, but I tried to enjoy it as much as I could. Yeah, and it's it is crazy. Like it sounds dumb that you get stressed out, but because you have no control at this point, like you yeah, it's you are hopeless. Cool. And I guess that's why you stress out because when you're pitching, and I know this is how just athletes work, but you don't stress out while you're pitching big big situations. Like you feel like you're in control, and I guess yeah. that's I guess that's why we feel that stress on that day because we have absolutely no control of what happens at that point. Yeah, for sure. What's the most frustrating questions you had to answer from like, because we were all home during this time. Like we had to get, we had the season got canceled. So you spent two or three months around people from your hometown asking you questions about the draft. What was the most frustrating one? Um, I think people just like ask, like, are you just going to go straight to the Braves? Like, yeah. A lot of people don't realize that there's minor leagues and you got to work your way through. Yeah. So I got that question a lot, and it's just, yeah, like it, it's fine because they don't know, but it's a little frustrating. You looking for places in Atlanta? Yeah. No, I'm not. Not, not for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now that one's tough. I I'd always be like, the ones that would always get me is would be like, so where you want to go? It's like I can answer this, but it doesn't matter. Oh yeah. <laughs> like it doesn't matter where I want to go. Just, they're gonna pick me. So I, I might as well not even get my hopes up anywhere. And it really, I really don't care, I guess. But yeah, that one, that one got me. And then the, uh, oh, let's see, like, who do you think is going to take you? Well, I don't know. They don't tell me anything. Yeah, they don't. Like, they keep it close to the best. It's so close. I we had Henry Davis on here, and he said that because I always wondered, like, first overall pick, a guy who knows they're probably going to go first overall when they find out. And he said he found out at like noon on draft day. And then, but Bobby Witt, who went second, he had no idea until his name got called. Really? Which is nuts. Like, you think those guys at the top would kind of have an idea, but it looks like, I mean, it's just as stressful for them as us, I guess. Yeah. So let's let's get into pro ball. And, and obviously this year you're having an awesome season. Um, numbers are incredible. And last year you started in Rome, um, and you had some pretty good numbers there. What was uh, – was there a big difference in – would you say there was a big difference in high baseball compared to what you were facing in college? Um, I think so. I think yeah, I think college is, is better than people think just because they're, they're scattering reports and everyone has like the same approach and yep. like think the scattering reports in college are a little better. But um, and I know it's cliche, but metal bats make a pretty big difference. Yeah, metal bats as well. They make they make a huge difference. Um, but that I think the high hitters are definitely more talented. Yeah. Yeah, sure. and it's – did you notice anything with, like, plate discipline and controlling the zone, just kind of like an enhanced knowledge of that? Yeah, I, I think that's the, the biggest difference uh, as you go up, like, levels. Like, they definitely chase less. They definitely uh, 
have better approaches mm-hmm. and are smarter hitters, hitters as you go up the levels. Yeah. And, and obviously you fared well in Rome and, and you get to throw 14 innings in Mississippi at the end of the year. Um, was it, was it good to experience just a little bit of that going into this year to kind of know what to expect? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think, uh, like, like I just said, like the approaches of from high to double A, it's a, it takes a pretty big jump, like with guys chasing and, um, doing damage if you if you don't execute a pitch um mm-hmm. and luckily i was there when we got to we won our uh league league title so i got to experience that too which is pretty cool yeah yeah that is cool um it's it's crazy to me how like you hear the cliches of of just get ahead like get ahead of hitters and then as you move up and as you face better hitters it proves to be so true like yeah, if you can get ahead you are in control it doesn't matter if you're facing mike trout it's crazy, isn't it? Did you have you did you notice that pretty early in your time in double A just facing better hitters? Yeah, that's that's probably like the most important thing, just getting ahead so you can mix it up. Cause I mean if a guy knows the fastball's coming two oh, probably gonna do some damage. Yeah. So yeah. getting ahead and just attacking the zones is the most important thing. That's some of the Braves definitely preach pretty hot pretty pretty loudly. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting to hear the different teams and what what they kind of preach because we had Adam Wainwright on and he was talking about how the Cardinals give a stat that in the major this is in the major leagues um, batting averages on balls in play on the first pitch of the at bat point zero four nine because we pulled up his his plots and it was like his first pitch is just in the middle somewhere yeah like it wasn't always fastball but he's mixing it up but it's in the zone and so we were asking him about it and he was like. I mean, heck, if the batting average is .049, I'm going to throw it in the zone and let them get out because that's yeah. unbelievable. Because, I mean, just getting – everybody's seen the numbers on one would compared to 01. But until you do it, like it's it's crazy to see when you're facing – because I know for me personally, I'm at the alternate site in San Diego facing rehabbing big leaguers, guys I've watched play for a lot of my life. And just the difference in at bat to at bat if I get ahead compared to if I get behind. Yeah. Especially especially like the confidence you have in an O two count or one two count compared to two. Yeah. yeah, you feel like you feel like you're on offense when you're ahead and you're on defense when you're behind. That's how I've always felt personally. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I feel that too. It's definitely a, like a game changer, uh getting ahead and counts. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're willing to you're willing to throw the change up a little bit further out the zone on 0-2, try to get a swing. and, and Yeah. So you're not going – you're go, getting to 1-2 instead of doing it on 2-0 and getting to 3-0. Yeah. Um, Shook, sure. you got the video on standby? Yes, I do. Jay, we have, an, we have a video of an at-bat um, from your outing in Chattanooga. So if you just run us through kind of what you're thinking here. Gotcha. Be nice. So before we start, you throw a true four seam, right? Yeah, I threw a four seam with some rod to it. Yeah. Getting it started. There it is. Right down the chute. Yeah, right down the middle. <laughs> get ahead. Get, get ahead. That's just how we talked about. All right, pause it, Shook. So if you see a guy, I don't know, you don't have to tell all your secrets here, obviously, but if you see a guy not really on the fastball like he was that first swing, you're bringing a fastball back within the next two pitches, right? Yeah, for sure. Like you I mean, might go away from it for one, but you're definitely coming back to it within the next two, I would assume. Yeah. I mean, it shows you might be looking for off speed or something. And I think uh, the catcher right there, Hendrick Clementina, does a really good job of reading swings. And so we don't, we're usually on the same page. So I trust him to what he calls and call the fastball there. And I trusted him with it. Nothing better than just being able to trust the catcher, right? Yeah. No shaking. Yeah. You're just like, all right. You can throw more conviction, too, when you know you got a good guy back there. For right? sure. For sure. It's a big boost. So, obviously, you threw the first one down the middle to get ahead. He's off of it. Just because he's off of it, you're not going to come back with one right down the middle again, right? You're going to get a little greedier with it like you did here and go up, try to get a swing and miss. Yeah, I'm usually aiming for up. Yeah. Uh, just missed the first one down. Luckily, just fell it off, though. Yeah. So, so you go up with that one. Go ahead and play it, Shook. So once you got him here, yeah, that's nasty. Y'all change piece. Pause it, pause it, Shook. 
So you had him, you had him fastball. Obviously, he's beat. Then you went up with it. Uh, change up's the obvious pitch there, right? Yeah, it's that's usually my go-to. It's my uh, better secondary pitch. So I'll throw it. I throw it about like thirty-three percent of the time. So uh, throw it pretty often. And so after you get a swing like that, he's way out front. You coming right back with it the next pitch? Yeah, for sure. And you're just gonna get gonna get a little more fine with it, or are you trying to do the same thing? Probably just trying to do the same thing. When I get yeah. too fine with it, sometimes I make it like uncompetitive. Yeah. So it'll be it'll just be like a wasted pitch or Yeah, especially when when he put a swing on it like that, you don't have to get real, real fine with it at that point. You're just trying to repeat it. Yeah, especially if I get it down, like even if he doesn't swing and miss, most likely just ground out or something and yeah being out so if so you're coming back it's one two you're coming back with a change up you're willing you're willing to let him hit this pitch right here is what you're saying yeah i mean that one got a little more down obviously but right aiming for the same spot just got a little more down well when you simplify things it's funny how that works right like you you're like i'm just gonna repeat this again and then it turns nastier yeah but but if you try to make it nastier it's like it ends up being right down the middle yeah, yeah, that, that, that's 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 pretty funny. Yeah, that that happens a lot. Like either it's right down the middle or it's uncompetitive if you try to make it too nasty. Yeah, but yeah, that's interesting what you said. You said you just wanted it down because you know if he does hit it, it's just going to be a ground ball. So so you throw that pitch and you miss down, you're fine with it, right? It's not really yeah. trying to be a glove strike. That yeah, I think it. even in like a two strike count, I'm still trying to t- like attack the hitter. Right. Yeah, no, I don't. I'm, I'm agree with you there. I don't. I don't like waste pitches. I hate that term. That's like my pet peeve of pitching. It's you only get what four balls, so why would you waste one? Yeah, and you only get like well, like 90 pitches in game in a minor, so can't waste any. You're of them. Kind of, no, and you're kind of taught that growing up. Like, oh, two waste one right here. Like, I don't want to waste it. Like, I don't want to throw a meatball, but I don't want to waste it. Yeah, you got to make it competitive, and at least like set up another pitch, like set up a fastball, set up slider or something yeah yeah a plan with every pitch for sure so can you go back to the video and pause it when he's got the ball hidden you try to at least so this deception that you have is this natural or something you worked on uh i think it's it's natural i think uh some of the stuff i do apply was i think just naturally shorten me up um yeah i think i've always been like decently short but i think just doing that work with the plow balls made it like a little more shorter, more efficient. And um, I think it adds definitely adds some deception, which which helps a bunch. Yeah. So so you have gotten shorter over time. This isn't this isn't something where you've I just that's not you're like just like it's natural movement, but you have shortened up over time with with some different mechanical things. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, I think it just helps me uh, stay on time a little bit more and um, just never really focused on, on anything arm arm action. I think just yeah bio balls and the work we did to move better, I think just naturally shortened it up. Yeah. Focusing on our arm, arm, arm action is, is a ticket to get domed up pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think, I mean, a lot of guys say like ground up, like that's what you should focus yeah. on. So Yeah. I mean, we're athletes and, and our body knows what to do. You just got to get in the right position and let it do it. You know. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and so we obviously you showcase your change up in this at bat. Um, for those of you listening, this is obviously an incentive to watch on YouTube. But your your change up has been quoted by Peter Mullen as the best change up in baseball. Um, has it always been like your go to weapon? Yeah, I, I, it has been. I think um, growing up, Free like um, like you're not supposed to throw a curveball or breaking ball to your older. And my dad kind of focused on that, so I just had to develop a change up. So I've always had a pretty good feel for it. And um, I think just the biggest key as I gotten older is just being able to throw it for strikes. Yeah. And um, I think it's, it's, uh, it's pretty good right now just because just I can throw it for strikes mm-hmm. and throw it below the zone like pretty, like pretty consistently. Yeah. And I would say, not personally for me, you may feel differently, but the change up was the hardest pitch for me to like mentally throw in the zone because you're thinking like if I miss with this changeup you could get smacked you know yeah like throwing it in the zone and gaining that kind of confidence to be able to do that was was kind of a hurdle it's, it's pretty it's pretty challenging 
want yeah. to get over too. Yeah, it is for sure. Um, yeah, I, I think just just having confidence and having mm -hmm. a feel for it. Like it's such a feel pitch. So like just having the confidence for it and being able to throw it like a fastball, just let trust in the grip. I think that's the biggest thing. Do you throw a true circle chain? Yeah, I throw a four-seam okay. circle chain, yeah. Okay. Do you know the numbers on it off the top of your head? Uh, like the horizontal and the vert? Yeah. It's, it's honestly like doesn't pop up like pop out on track man it's a lot like um Giolito's for the white okay. Sox. like it just plays off your plays, fastball. yeah plays so well off my fastball has a little horizontal but not too much but it just i kill okay. spin and the velo difference what's the difference in vert from your fastball to the change up um i think my change up might have like 10 vert and my fastball might have like like 17 or 18. Yeah. So, so a good seven, eight inches off. That's, that's definitely a big difference. And how hard are you throwing the change up at? Uh, it's like 80, 82. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously you're feeling really good right now. Are y'all on a five or six day rotation? Uh, six, uh, six day usually, but this week, um, I got the Tuesday, Sunday start. Ah, so it's the five day. Sunday. You like the Tuesday, Sunday? Uh, this is my first one this year. I mean, okay. it, it's fine. Yeah. Um, just got to like focus in on recovering more and mm -hmm. getting some good sleep throughout the week. It was, it was crazy to me, the difference in just one day, like in college, you're every seven days, but when you're going every six days, it feels like you're off the mound so much. Do you like yeah, that? I feel, it feels like I started yesterday and I'm already got to, I got to yeah. start tomorrow. Do you like that feeling though? Like, it feels like I feel like to me like you can really start to get a feel for your pitches when you're off the mound so consistently. Yeah, I definitely feel that for sure. I feel like more consistent. I I, I definitely have a better feel for all my pitches, and and I like it. Being a starting pitcher, it gets hard sometimes because you got to watch a lot. Yeah, like you, you're not competing in the games a lot, so being able to pitch more, I definitely enjoy that. For sure, for sure. We'll keep keep doing your thing, man, because clearly something's working. Um, before I let you go. I'm going to ask you a non-baseball question. Um, I saw you're a Patriots fan. I was scrolling through your Twitter, Patriots fan. Yeah. Um, I wore my Matt Ryan jersey today. I'm not a Colts fan, but I'm just I'm, – I'm a Falcons fan, but I love oh, Matt Ryan. Um, what – so life after Tom Brady, what's that like? Is it – are you ever going to be satisfied with a quarterback again, or are you just – Um, I, I don't know. Some of my friends, like – kind of root against Brady right now, but I'm, I'm still in, like, like yeah. for him. Like, if they don't, as long as they don't play the Patriots, I'm rooting for him. But I think Mac is pretty good right now. Yeah. I think he yeah, just, he's solid. I think he needs to get his arm strength up a little bit, and I think they need better receivers for him. But, like, I think he is the best rookie quarterback in, in that draft class. So they definitely think they got the right guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's a competitor for sure. AFC's loaded now. It's crazy. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be couple of years before the Pats make any noise in the in the AFC. It's it's loaded. The quarterback talent is nuts. Like yeah. it feels like if you don't have one of those top guys, it's just gonna be tough to ever get through that gauntlet that the playoffs are gonna be. Yeah, the AFC West might be like the one of the best conferences ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was uh I had to ask because I feel like there's such a because that's probably the only quarterback you knew your whole life was Brady. So Yeah, I mean he started when I was two years old. He, uh, went to the Bucks when I was like 21, 22, maybe. Yeah. He's been yeah. there my whole life. <laughs> Mac Jones has, has an impossible act to follow up, but. I know, but he's been doing a good job. He has, no doubt. Uh, Shook, you got anything before we head out? Uh, yeah, I was just going to ask, uh, as you kind of look back, um, the start you had against Louisville in 2020, where you struck out 13 and seven and a third, Mm -hmm. In terms of like the draft, do you feel like that was that kind of helped in you flying up the draft boards? Or do you think it was already kind of on that trajectory? I think I was definitely on the up trajectory, but I think, I mean, that being my last college start before COVID happened, I think that definitely helped. It didn't um, hurt. Yeah, it definitely didn't hurt. I think it gave like the scouts like a good like last impression. I would assume and, that was um, you versus Reed that night. Uh, it was me versus Bobby Miller. Okay. So, um, one but yeah, he, he, he threw like a no hitter through like seven against us. <laughs> he gave a, gave a, a hit in the seventh and he shoved too. But, um, 
yeah, I think that definitely helped. And um, it was the first ACC series of the year. So uh, getting, it, getting it in against that competition was definitely a big plus. Yeah. Well, Jared, we really appreciate you coming on, dude, uh, on your off day, I know. But uh, appreciate you giving us some of your time. We're pulling for you. Uh, and you're welcome back anytime, man. Appreciate it. Thank, thank, thank you all for having me on.